In this video, I will talk about simultaneous equations in R. Before you watch this video, please make sure you have watched my other video called Simultaneous Equations. I have opened up the R script here. I have downloaded the data uh, M ROS that we're going to be using. I have put it into my directory here where the data is located and I have run this R script and here are the results in the console window which are typically at the bottom but I have put them to the side. So what we are going to talk today about are simultaneous equations, how to estimate them using two-stage least squares and then testing for the rank condition. Uh, we would be installing and using several of these packages, so please make sure you have that done. And so let's go ahead and get started with simultaneous equations. Uh, for this example, we are going to have labor supply and demand for working women. And using the data set mros.csv, we're going to read it into our data frame mros. And we're going to only keep working women in the data set. So we're going to be filtering in labor force equals one. So this is going to keep only working women in the data. So now that we have the data set up and ready to go, let's go ahead, use the, the data uh, and select a few variables, including log of wage, education, experience, experience square age, kids that are less than six years old and non-wife income. And we're going to use the stargazer to summarize this data set and to see the first 10 observations. So this is how the first 10 observations look like. This is the log wage. Uh, here's education in years, experience, experience square, the age of the person, uh, of the working women. Here we have a number of kids that are less than six years old. And here we have what is the non-wife income in the family. And here are some means and standard deviations and other descriptive statistics uh, for data as well. So let's go ahead with a regression model. Uh, and for this, we're going to be using um, for this, we're going to be using a simple OLS, uh, we're going to be using an OLS estimation. So we're going to be estimating a linear model. This is the number of hours that women work. And then uh, we are going to be using uh, log of wage to explain uh, the number of hours worked, education, uh, age, kids that are less than six years old, and non-wife income. And so once we estimate this model, these are the results that we're going to be getting. So here we get, um, this is the equation, uh, hours regressed on log wage and the other independent variables. And um, this is the coefficient here on of interest. This is do wages, do higher wages lead to more hours uh, uh, that women work? And using OLS, we're showing that actually this coefficient is not significantly different from zero. So now let's use a two-stage least squares for this equation. And the way to uh, the, the the way to use it is we're going to be using IV reg. And here we have exactly the same equation that we have above here. That's the equation that we have here. However, we're now assuming that log of wage would be an endogenous variable. And so because it's an endogenous variable for the first stage, we're going to do minus the log wage. So we're going to skip, we're not going to include the log wage, but uh, we're going to be using it um, uh, we're going to use the exogenous variables from the other equation, experience and experience square, to estimate this model. So notice that this experience and experience square are the exogenous variables that are included in the other uh, regression that we are going to be using here as instruments. And so uh, we can go ahead and estimate this uh, uh, regression using two-stage least squares. And these are going to be the results that we see here. 
And uh, so we see the same equation here, estimated uh, hours regressed on log wage and the other uh, variables that we have here. However, this log wage is actually the log wage hat. This is the fitted values from the first stage on log of wage on the, on the exogenous variables from this model, as well as the exogenous variables from the other equation, which serve as instruments here. And these are the experience and experience square. So here again, this is the log wage hat that we have here, the fitted values of log wage. And look at this coefficient. This coefficient is now significantly different from zero. So what we are finding is that uh, for each additional 1% uh, increase in wage, we're going to see a 16 hour increase, uh, 16 hours increase in the total number of hours worked for working women. So basically women would respond to the incentive of higher wages uh, after we correct for endogeneity. Okay, so now let's go ahead and repeat exactly the same process with the other equation. So again, we're using uh, instrumental variables procedures, two stage least squares to correct for the endogeneity, potential endogeneity of hours because log wage and hours are the uh, endogenous uh, variables here due to the simultaneous equations. So now we need to find instruments for hours and the way to find instruments for hours is we're going to be using the variables from the other equation, uh, from the first equation here, they're going to serve as instruments here. Um, so let's go ahead and estimate first this equation using OLS. Then uh, for the IV regression, what we're going to be using is hours would be instrumented by the variables in the other equation. So here, this is going to be the equation that we estimate here, but uh, here we're going to have that hours, that's the endogenous variable, but these age, kids less than six years old and non-wife income, these are again the instruments uh, which are actually the exogenous variables in the other equation. Uh, so now let's go ahead and estimate uh, this and, and look in the results. So here is the OLS uh, estimation that we have, ignoring any potential endogeneity due to the simultaneous equations. Uh, here we have log wage regressed on hours and other independent variables. And here we see that this uh, coefficient here is not significantly different from zero. Now, if we use the two-stage least squares procedure where we use the uh, instruments, which are the uh, exogenous variables in the other equation, uh, we use them as instruments here. Um, this is the uh, model um, that we're going to have. This is the two-stage least squares. And here we see uh, these coefficients are a little bit different, um, but as we're looking at the coefficient on hours, we again see uh, that it is not significantly different from zero as it was here. So we're concluding that even after correction, for endogeneity, we actually do not see significant uh, uh, significant results in terms of the effect of hours on the uh, wages uh, received. Okay, the final thing that we can do here is testing for the rank condition, and this involves estimating the reduced form equation and testing for the significance of the coefficients of the instrumental variables. And so we basically want to know, do we have good instruments? And the way to achieve that is we are going to be looking at the exogenous variables in the other equations. We're going to be including them in the reduced form equations, and we're going to test for the coefficients to make sure that they're significantly different from zero. Okay, so here's the first reduced form equations that we're going to be estimating here. So here we're going to, going to have log wage regressed on uh, all of the variables from its own equation, as well as the uh, variables from the other equation. And so these are the results that we're going to have here. So this is the estimated 
the equation and the results and we're going to be looking at the coefficient on experience and experience square we're seeing that actually they are significantly different from zero using individual t-tests and using a joint test using linear hypothesis uh, for the coefficients on experience and experience square we also see that the p-value here this is the f statistic and this is the p-value the p-value is less than 0.05 which means that we have joint significance significance of the coefficients on experience and experience square. So what this means here is that because we have good instruments here for, for, uh, for log wage, we're going to be able to identify the equation for hours because we're now having good instruments for log of wage, which was the endogenous variable in the equation for hours. Repeating the same process for the other equation, we're now going to be estimating reduced form models for hours, identifying the equation for log of wage. So here we have hours regressed on uh, all of the variables, um, all of the variables here, including the um, endogen, the uh, instruments as well. And so these are going to be the instruments here, age, kids less than six years old and non-wife income. And so once we estimate this uh, equation here, uh, these are the results, this is the reduced form equation, and we're looking at these coefficients and we actually have that two of them are significantly different from zero. So now using the linear hypothesis for a joint uh, test for the coefficients of all of these three variables being significantly different from zero, we're getting actually, this is the F statistic and the p-value still being less than 0.05, which means that we have that age, um, the coefficients on the age, kids less than six years old and non-wife income are jointly significantly different from zero, which means that now because they're in the reduced form equation, uh, for hours, they would be able to identify the equation for log wage. So we again, uh, with this part here, we show that uh, we have uh, good instruments and to use the instruments, we're basically using the variables, the exogenous variables that we have in the other equation. So this concludes how to do simultaneous equations and uh, estimate them using two-stage least squares. Uh, and as instruments, we can use the variables from the other equation. Thank you for watching.